Welcome back to Flint Creek Transport. My name is Justin. Today I'm going to give you guys a little look at what happens at our Flint Creek Transport slash Sense and Eggs Landscape Supply Christmas party. Every year at over Christmas time, we hold a party. Basically what it is, is a breakfast for the employees. The employees come out, help make it, and uh, then we all eat. And, it's, and we have some gifts and stuff like that. It's a fun time. So what you're about to see is a little look into that party. This year, we're doing something a little bit special for the Flint Creek employees. The Sensei employees already had their team building event. Flint Creek is now gonna have their team building event, which is racing. I'll show you. First off, I'll show you a little look into the Christmas party. And then after that, we're gonna hit the racetrack. And I just wanna remind you, this truly is a wonderful time of the year. So many times we forget the true meaning of Christmas, the true reason for the season, and that is, is Jesus. That is Jesus. He came here as a baby to save us from our sins. And that is a wonderful thing. It's a blessing, it is a gift, and that is why we are giving to others this season. So remember that Jesus is the reason for the season. Don't forget. You're on camera. <laughs> Justin's famous for videos. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone, and happy Christmas, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year. And have a wonderful vacation. I have a question. Well, I'd like to, it says on the agenda that I'm giving inspiration. And I was thinking, what would be inspirational? And I thought of two words. And, and the one would be miracle. Miracles. Do you believe in miracles? And the other is the word comfort. I love that word. And I think they're related. Uh, first of all, I have a question. How many of you were here at a Christmas breakfast before today? Raise your hand. How many were not? That, that's a better question. Yeah, we got some new faces, some new people. It's constantly changing. And, the, and they say uh, the stability of a company depends on how long you can keep your employees, right? And I think basically when you have a lot of growth, you need new employees. And the good part is the new ones that come in are often pretty good, really good. So yeah, we're excited. As far as the miracle, I'll just give a little bit of history. There's a lot of you don't know our history, and that's okay. It's not that serious or important. But when we first started with the landscape supplies, it was mulch, and I had an old truck used to haul pigs, and it, it, it was not a dump truck. And we used to deliver mulch with this little stake body truck, and the boys would shovel it off. We'd back into a place, and they'd say, where do you want your mulch? And they'd look right here. Oh, and then the boys would get their forks and here we go. And in just a few minutes we were done. But the miracle was, I used to look around and think, will there ever be a time when I have two steak body trucks to deliver mulch? And, and I would have never imagined that I would see the day with this kind of, you know, force, workforce, and a, and a tremendous workforce. So that's, to me, that's a miracle. Now, there are other miracles that, you know, I, I like to focus on the Christmas miracle, first of all. Then I'd like to share a few others. Uh, there was a miracle. Isaiah, the prophet, spoke about a time when God was going to do, give a special gift to humanity. And he said, he's going to send a son. Uh, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And uh, Emmanuel means God with us. And that was a miracle. 
How could a virgin, how could a woman who never knew a man uh, bear a son? And the fact is, God had a purpose in that. This son was not going to have human blood. It had the blood of God. And that's what it took for our redemption. Because all of us around this table in this room have the same kind of blood and it's not good. It's Adam and Eve's blood, fallen, contaminated. But God sent a son who had pure blood. It was God's blood. And it, was, it took that for Jesus to be our Redeemer. And today he's our, what we call the Messiah. Through the Old Testament, they were looking forward to a Messiah. One who could come in and give leadership. One who could deliver. One who could have the an answers for humanity. And you know, the Messiah to me is precious today. I just read through the book of Isaiah and it was wonderful to see in a day when there's so much confusion and everything seems to be right is wrong and wrong is right and everything's upside down and, and the politicians uh, lost their common sense. Uh, you know, what more should you say? But in a day like that, it's still, it, it's so comforting to focus on God's leadership, leadership that is just and right and, and you know, dependable. <clears throat> and that's what we have in Jesus. This miracle, a virgin conceiving, bearing a son, and God being with us. That was a miracle. And it was all, you know, what's Christmas all about? It was a nighttime scene. A small country town in Bethlehem was quiet and still. The citizens were sleeping, oblivious to the humble couple who had arrived late at the inn and tired and had bedded down in a stable because there was no vacancy in the inn. No one but God understood the miracle unfolding in that lowly stable. All the prophecies, all the writings, the oral teachings passed down through the centuries were all speaking of a coming Messiah who would break the power of Satan over humanity through the miracle of God becoming a man all was culminating in that moment, in that humble little stable, with a humble little cu old cu or couple bringing this son into the world. What a tremendous display of the Creator's unending love for the world he had created. What humility and lowliness of Almighty God that he would become a man, that he would give his life an offering for sin and redeem men and women back into his fellowship. So that's the miracle of Christmas. And when, if you get tired of all the other things that occupy so much of our thinking and time, get back there and focus on this. And it's beautiful yet. And I, you know, I was thinking it's a miracle that you and I could be redeemed and that we could have a relationship with our Creator God. And it's a miracle that he even takes time for us. Uh, one of the psalm writers said, What is man that, that thou art mindful of him? Why would God even visit us? Why would he even bring forth? Why did he go to all this uh, work to bring a redeemer? So that's the miracle of Christmas. Now the word hope. I'd like to take it to, a, um, now maybe before I go on, I ask you, how many of you believe in miracles today yet? And, you know, it was Monday, Monday night of this week. I always thought that, you know, if you get into a tight spot, you can either break, you can turn, or you can do something to get out of it. But suddenly I had a car right in my face. I mean, I was completely helpless at 50 mile an hour, and I thought, whatever, this car coming right into my face. And the next moment, there was an explosion, airbags everywhere, dust flying, and I was spinning in a circle, and I sat there in the pickup. Now what? I guess I'm okay. It hurts across here. So I just sat quietly, and about that time, one of the workmen, where's Gerald? 
Gerald. Here, I opened the door, and here, under the airbag, comes Gerald's face saying, are you okay, are you okay, what can I do? He was right there and helped me out of that, and I was able to walk to his vehicle to the ambulance picked me up. And you know what? It all ended really good. The only thing the doctor, after all the tests, uh, told me here at Geneva, um, you know, you have a broken sternum, the bone, the biggest bone in our body, this big, flat, strong bone that protects the heart and lungs is split. And, and she said it was like, mm, I was trying to read her face. Is that good or bad, or is it really bad? But later someone told me, people that have broken sternum, only one out of, uh, out of every two that have that, only one survives. Wow, I, I, I guess that's okay. I, that's, <laughs> but anyway, I'm still surviving. But yeah, it hurts. And if you don't know it, maybe you can tell by now, I'm on a lot of pain meds. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, I can feel I'm sedated. Well, anyway, that I consider a miracle. And I, you know, I think of all of you and what God does in answering prayer, keeping you safe and um, truck drivers and um, what they face in the road every day and all of us. We're living in a world that has a lot of danger. But the comfort is, God still works miracles. And I love the word comfort. I'd like to read one scripture on comfort yet. Isaiah 40. If you want to read a really encouraging passage, read Isaiah 40. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, saith your God. Speak comfortably to Jerusalem, crying to her. Her warfare is accomplished, and her iniquity is pardoned. For she has received of the Lord Lord's hand double for all her sins. I used to read that and I'd say, oh, that's God. He gives us double punishment, double justice for her sins. That was wrong. Do you know what it means when you, uh, he says, speak a word of comfort? You have received double for all your sins. It's double grace, double forgiveness, double mercy we didn't even deserve it. And so that's, we're all in one boat here this morning, sitting in one room around one table, and we all need that double forgiveness. And that is a word of comfort. I just thank God for that this morning. And I just read this, this is a little comment for preachers. And it said, you know, if you want a good audience, remember in every church service, there are hidden, hurting people, hidden, hurting people. Then you'll have a good audience if you preach from that perspective. And I had to think of that this morning. In every business meeting, there are hidden, hurting people. I don't know, I look around here and none of you look like you're hurting. But the fact is, we don't know who's hurting sitting right beside us. There's hurts, there's a lot of hurts in life. But the comfort is, there's a message where God says, comfort ye. And I would, one of the goals we have for this workplace is to bring comfort to hurting people. I don't care what you're facing, but I know this, God wants the comfort. He is the best shepherd ever, and he'll take good care of you. So, blessings to you. You're gonna have a little time off, I guess. But we're ready to, now to, I think we're going to conclude here with that inspiration, miracles and comfort. And then the rest of this, I don't know how comforting this will be, because you might get what you want, you might not. <laughs> We are at our race at the racetrack up in Rochester. Check this out. So there's about 35 of us racing. And the third group is just coming out. They have us in groups of 10. Or I should say, I think there's three there's seven in that group, about groups of seven to eight.
And this is all indoor. It's an Indy Kart raceway.
So this is the second to last group. What they do here is start everybody kind of staggered and they all take off at the same time. And this race, the last race they have is about position. The first two races were about time and the fastest time set your position for the last race. So now it's about holding your position or getting ahead. I'm stuck in the last race, uh, which is, I think there's gonna be eight or nine guys in there and these guys are very competitive. So there's like eight or nine of us that are like super close on lap times. It's gonna get interesting. Does that sound awesome or what? Back in my office again. So it was too dark to see me outside, but what with those trucks that were leaving, this is after the party, uh, after the race in, there's a place that, a, a receiver that receives 24 seven. Those guys were headed out to unload. So I just shot some random video of those guys leaving. It was pretty cool. There you have it. I'm a mess. We had a blast racing. We had uh, awesome breakfast. A fun time with gifts. You can see a little bit what all went down, uh, but it was a ton of fun. And I'm very competitive. These guys still beat me. There's like four or five guys in front of me racing. Just could not beat them, but it was a ton of fun. So thanks so much guys for watching. All your support for this previous year or two years since I had the channel. I was just looking at, I, it brought uh, brought up like a memory or whatever it said. I, I hit over 2 million views, which is pretty awesome. So thank you for that. I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. God bless you all. Peace out.